if you want 10 cores and 20 threads with 16 gigabytes of RAM and motherboard without this cooler of course for a hundred Canadian dollars then this is the best motherboard combo to get in 2023 Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the most underrated tech channel. And what I have here is an E52670 V2 Xeon combo that I picked up on AliExpress for 100 Canadian dollars. But if the price alone does not pique your interest, then stay here and watch the whole video to see how it performs when it's paired up with three different graphics cards. Anyways, let's talk about the combo a little bit. For the CPU, like I said, it's the E52670 V2. It has 10 cores and 20 threads. And on the Intel website, it says it has a boost clock up to 3.5 gigahertz all cores. But from my own testing on this motherboard, it only ever boosts up to around 2.8 to 3 gigahertz maximum. This combo includes a 4x4 gigabyte ECC registered DDR3 1600 megahertz memory, which means it'll work perfectly with the Xeon CPU. And really quickly, before we move on to the test bench parts, just keep in mind since there are a lot of different combos on AliExpress for similar price, and unless it has a V2 or higher number in the CPU name, I would not recommend you to get it because anything older will not have a lot of instruction sets that is required for a lot of modern games and programs. Now, in order to test the CPU RAM motherboard combo, I am using a aftermarket snowman cooler that I picked up on AliExpress for $25, which has four heat pipes, and the fan is blowing downwards towards the CPU and the VRM heatsink, which means it should be able to lower the VRM temperature by a little bit. For all the benchmarks, I slotted in this brand new fast speed 1TB MVV M.2 drive that I picked up on AliExpress for $60, which was pretty fast and enough storage for all the benchmarks done in today's video. Now for the graphics cards I used to benchmark this combo, I used a GTX 960 4GB for low ends, an RX 580 2048SP 8GB card as mid-range, and an RTX 3060 Ti to represent budget high-end performance. Also for the benchmarks, I'll be showing you guys side-by-side -side comparisons for 9 different games. Now before we get into the gaming results, I tested in Cinebench R23 at the multi-score setting and I got a score of 6929. This score is actually not that impressive considering that the 6 core 12 threaded Ryzen 5 2600 or the 1600X gets around the same score. But considering those chips go for around $50 on the used market which is half of the $100 budget, then once you add the RAM and motherboard, the pricing will be way above $100 considering AM4 motherboards are not so common anymore. Now before you comment down below that Ryzen has upgrade path, this X79 platform also has upgrade path. For example, you could go up to a 12 core 24 threaded Xeon E52697 V2 for around $50. And on top of that, you could easily upgrade the RAM to 64GB for around $60. So really the only thing you need to worry about is the IPC which is significantly worse than Ryzen platform. But if you're on a budget, there's no way you're gonna go out and buy a really high-end graphics card anyways. Now for the games, I first benchmarked the heavy hitter Cyberpunk 2077 at the low preset at 1080p. On the GTX 960 4GB, it was able to reach an average of 36 FPS and a minimum of 18 FPS. On the RX 580 2048GB card, it was able to reach an average of 53 FPS and a minimum of 30 FPS. Then on the RTX 3060 Ti, it reached an average of 83 FPS with a minimum of 51 FPS. With these results, you can already see there's a CPU bottleneck because the 3060 Ti gets around 80 FPS on high settings at 1440p with a Ryzen 5 5600. But there are still pretty significant differences between these graphics cards on the CPU. Next up, I tested one of the games I started playing recently, which is Warhammer Vermintide 2. At the lowest preset at DX12 in 1080p, on the GTX 960 4GB, I got an average of 108 FPS. On the RX 580 2048SP, I got an average of 109 FPS. And on the RTX 3060 Ti, I got an average of 114 FPS. With these results, we could clearly see that Vermintide 2 actually utilizes a lot of CPU power rather than the GPU. 
Next up is the eSport title that is way better than Valorant. It's CSGO at the lowest setting at 1080p on the GTX 960 4GB. I got an average of 223 FPS. On the RX 580 2048SP, I got an average of 231 FPS. Then, on the RTX 3060 Ti, I got an average of 251 FPS. Of course, here's another example of CPU bottleneck. But with these results, we can see that CSGO actually utilizes more GPU power than Vermintide 2 does. Next up, I tested Valor, or as I like to call it, the SHITTIEST GAME EVER at the lowest settings at 1080p. On the GTX 960 4 gigabyte, it got an average of 189 FPS with a 1% low of 76 FPS. On the RX 580 2048SP, it got an average of 199 FPS and a 1% low of 81 FPS. Then, for the third graphics card on the RTX 3060 Ti, it got an average of 202 FPS and a 1% low of 89 FPS. It's basically the same story as Vermintide 2, where this is the best performance you could expect out of this CPU. Next up, I tested a fairly new game which is Hogwarts Legacy at the low preset with TAA on low and no upscaling technology enabled. On the GTX 960 4GB, I was able to get an average of 36 FPS with a 1% low of 27 FPS. On the RX 580, I was able to get an average of 50 FPS and a 1% low of 30 FPS. Then, on the RTX 3060 Ti, I was able to get an average of 53 FPS and a 1% low of 31 FPS. So right here is a perfect example of a CPU bottleneck, but that is expected since Hogwarts Legacy like to use CPUs with a higher clock speed. Regardless, above 30 FPS is still a pretty enjoyable time for a single player title like this. After that, I decided to test a game with a built-in benchmark which is Rainbow Six Siege at the low preset but with the effects AA. On the GTX 960 4GB, I was able to get an average of 125 FPS and a minimum of 84 FPS. On the RX 580, I was able to get an average of 157 FPS with a minimum of 120 FPS. On the RTX 3060 Ti, I got an average of 244 FPS with a minimum of 165 FPS. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is one of those esports titles that is not completely dependent on CPU power alone, which is why there's a less of a CPU bottleneck in this title. Next up, I tested the best crossover game, Fortnite, in DX12 with pro settings which is basically everything turned down except for the view distance which is not epic and the render resolution at 100% and also without anti-aliasing. With the GTX 960 4GB, I was able to get an average of 101 FPS with a 1% low of 27 FPS. With the RX 580 2048SP, I was able to get an average of 131 FPS with a 1% low of 76 FPS. Now really interesting, with the RTX 3060 Ti, I got a pretty decent average of 149 fps but the one percent low was lower than the rx 580 2048 sp at 49 fps and i did test this multiple times but the results were pretty similar regardless it was still pretty smooth on the rtx 3060 ti so you don't have to worry about that Lastly, I tested Overwatch 2 at the low preset with FSR disabled. With the GTX 960 4 GB, I got an average of 153 FPS and a 1% low of 85 FPS. With the RX 580, I got an average of 198 FPS with a 1% low of 101 FPS. Then, on the RTX 3060 Ti, I got an average of 237 FPS with a 1% low of 113 FPS. As you can see from the results, there is a difference between the RTX 3060 Ti and the RX 580 2048SP, but it's not that big of a difference because of a CPU bottleneck. And that's all the benchmarks for today's video. In conclusion, I would say the best GPU you should pair up with this CPU motherboard RAM combo is around a RTX 3060 because anything higher than that will basically give out the same performance. Anyways, for just 100 Canadian dollars, I think the CPU RAM motherboard combo is definitely worth the pickup, especially when you live in a country where there's no good deals and you want a lot of cores for your money. With all that being said, if you liked the video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to your channel. If you didn't, still give this video a thumbs up because nobody can see the dislike ratio anyway so might as well just like the video and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video